Okay, I guess I can keep using Panasonic for a little bit longer. Just a quick rambling update. I don't have a script for this. I'm just talking to the camera. But a follow-up to my camera conundrum where I've been moving back and forth between a different, a couple different camera bodies. I recently got to test drive a Sony. I was really taken with how well that Sony operated. But at the same time, picking up a new Sony camera body would have meant selling almost every other piece of gear that I currently have going down to one camera. And it probably wouldn't have covered an investment in nice lenses. One of the major changes I hope to implement by moving into this new space, Gadget Lab 4, I just wanna be able to move around a bit more. Setting up some of these talking to camera shots in previous Gadget Labs was a little bit more difficult, and in part because I couldn't always trust my camera. It slows you way down in the creative process when you've gotta manually focus for every minor change or adjustment. You can't trust the autofocus to do its job without you constantly babysitting it, well, that's a problem. So I'm in the new Gadget Lab and I'm seriously considering whether or not I'm gonna switch camera systems here. And then Panasonic puts out a flurry of updates and maybe I can stave off that transition a little bit longer. A firmware update for one of my favorite lenses, this is the 1235, which is just great glass. This really is a, a handy little zoom lens, but the biggie, my Panasonic G9 also got a firmware update and one of the major aspects of that firmware update was to improve autofocus. If you've ever shot on Panasonic, it's definitely one of the weak spots of this system. And it's one of the encouraging aspects. It's one of the main reasons why I tend to produce most of my videos in 4K at 60 frames per second, even if I'm doing a 1080p at 30 frames per second, sort of mix down of that project for YouTube. This update dropped last night from the time that I'm shooting this video. And so my, time spent playing with it has been a little limited. The way that this camera tracks a subject, especially in face and eye detection modes, seems to analyze frame by frame. So at 24 frames per second, that breathing action as it locks onto a subject takes longer for the camera to analyze all of that data. It's why it's a benefit when you shoot 60 frames per second, it's getting more information per second faster, and it seems to be able to track your subject a lot more accurately. That, and I've always just liked the look of high frame rate video for more editorial style content. I'm not shooting cinematic, I'm trying to demonstrate. At 60 frames per second on the older firmware, I, I would have considered this autofocus acceptable. I've already shot a few videos in this more limited space. It seems to work okay. It was pulsing just a little bit more than I would have preferred. After the firmware update, this is quite a bit smoother. I like the look of how it tracks and how it follows, especially when I'm making larger differences in distance between me and the camera. This is something that I can employ a bit more readily. Set up the camera, very quickly line up my shot, flip on some kind of lighting, and just go. I don't have to worry about using some other control interface or you know Bluetoothing from a phone to better tailor fit the focus. I'm trusting this a lot more. I still feel that this focus breathes just a little bit more than I would prefer, especially making some of those distance changes. It always feels like it has to push past your subject and then recover. Not that it ever perfectly snaps onto your focus like a rack focus, like something that was designed as part of the shot. It almost always feels like an overcorrection and then a correction. At 24 frames per second, it looks really gross. At 60 frames per second, it's subtle enough that I think I can get away with it for my sort of vloggy, talking to camera style videos. This type of commentary video, it's not so precious or so dependent that the autofocus snap perfectly when I make a small change and then I recover from that change, and then I move a little bit, I feel like this camera can follow me at 60 frames per second well enough for me to have a conversation with y'all and not have it be too distracting. The Panasonic G9 came in clutch. I really wanted to upgrade to 4K at 60 frames per second. I didn't wanna to have to spend into a much higher tier of camera body. I think this is still one of the most cost-effective ways that you can get 4K 60 if you can handle some of those recording time limit limitations. Now with just that little extra bit of polish on the autofocus performance, I'm feeling a little bit better about riding this generation of cameras out longer, giving me just a little bit of extra time to kind of pad out my budget until I consider what camera or what system 
I might want to migrate to. Updates are always fun, keeping track of this hardware longer term, it's good times. And then also just uh, as I familiarize myself with this new office, kind of chatting out and sharing some of those experiences with you fine folks out there. Gonna go ahead and put a pin in this one. As always folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch you all on the next video.